with reference to investment decisions in order to ensure wealth maximization for the corporate owners we know that the uh, uh, financial models and other investment theories in finance theory are characterized by uh, rational human behavior uh, in the presence of uh, a world which is hypothetically uh, known as efficient capital market uh, and in this scenario the uncertainties are reduced to measurable probabilities all these steps are meant to ensure the creation and sustaining of wealth maximization for the firm owners so far as the shareholders wealth or value addition is concerned in fact uh, management still have no precise definition of what is meant by wealth maximization for the shareholders uh, is it a dividend or is it future earnings or is it the combination of these two items that are incorporated in order to attain capital gains in the market now there arises a uh, fundamental problems that whether a firm's dividend decisions rather than a reinvestment plan for the firm's growth has any differential impact on its share prices in the stock market there also exist two other problems in this regard that the management perception on earning measurement may differ not only because of variation in the accounting methods but also due to the management's greed instead of working for the shareholders welfare the second question arises that the asymmetric information rumor speculation and crowd behavior may turn market into inefficiency and instability uh, which may lead towards the crash in the market now if without internal cash flow information available to the ex external investors whether these investors are able to reformulate external uh, uh, accounting data to measure the consequences of managerial decisions now whether it is possible this question arises and the other question arises that if it is possible to manipulate the external accounting data to determine the consequences of the managerial decisions then capital market may have some control over the manager behavior that conflicts with the creation of wealth maximization so these are the two fundamental questions economic value added uh, perfect capital markets encourage wealth maximization in the form of cash inflows to the firm at much cheaper cost of creating them and which are expected as a result of optimum management optimum investment finance decisions we know that the firm's objective can be classified it categorized as a single line item which is a wealth maximization for the shareholders now this wealth maximization of shareholders can be viewed from the perspective of finance theory and from the perspective of the economic theory finance theory means uh, that the wealth maximization can be termed as net present value maximization means that the welfare or wealth of the shareholder can be maximized if the net present value of all of the projects undertaken by a firm is maximized but economic theory translates this wealth maximization into value addition so far as eva or economic value added is concerned it is the excess of distribution 
disputable profits over the overall cost of capital of the firm by disputable profit we means the deleveraged earnings this means that to determine disputable profit we have to add back interest expense to the after tax profits this means that eva is equal to earning after tax plus interest expense which is then known as distributable profit from this distributable profit we deduct the overall cost of capital uh, in other words we distributable profit may be termed as uh, no pad means net operating profit after tax and this no pad can also be termed as net operating income uh, to determine cash uh, cost of capital we multiply opportunity cost with the capital of the firm if distributable profits are greater than the cost of capital this mean there is positive eva and by positive eva we mean that wealth has been created for the shareholder which is termed as value creation but on the other hand if distributable profits of the firm are lesser than its cost of capital then there is negative eva and by negative eva we mean that the value or wealth of the shareholders has been deleted or destroyed we have an other uh, measure that is market value added in fact market value added is an external measure that reflects the effect of eva on the share prices of the firm in a stock market to determine market value added we need to deduct the capital of a firm from its market value of equity and market value of debt this means that we need to determine uh, a market value of the overall firm and from this market value of the whole firm we when deduct uh, capital of the firm the resulting figure is known as market value added market value added has a significant relation with the economic value added and if eva is positive then this means that market value added will be positive and this will lead towards the wealth creation for the shareholders on the other hand if eva is negative then we may have negative mva this means that the value or wealth of the shareholders may have been destroyed or deleted while determining wealth maximization or value addition for the shareholders we have to uh, account for uh, two other things that profit and cash flows uh, for profit and cash flows uh, we have npv uh, we know that npv is a cash flow driven matrix we add back certain non cash items to the accounting income and we arrive at npv of the project or of an investment proposals but to determine ev or economic value added we need to adjust certain accounting based adjustments to the accounting earnings along with the interest expense so we can say that the relationship between income and cash flow can be developed if we adjust our income with some accounting adjustments then we come to the figure of cash flows eva is a periodic concept this periodic concept can be determined in the form of increase and decrease in the economic profits of the firm but so far as the market value added is concerned it is a residual phenomenon this means that it is the cumulative of past evas that has been accumulated in the form of wealth so it is a residual phenomena to check the relationship between eva npv and market value added we have a little example here we have v for value at present which is 200 million we have no pet for the current period which is 20 million we have capital right now which is 100 million 
we have cost of capital which is 10 percent we have opening market value added or opening mva which is 90 million now to determine eva we know that we have to deduct overall cost of capital from the no pad now we have no pad of 20 million and to determine cost of capital we multiply 10 percent to the capital which is 100 percent the resulting figure is 10 when we deduct this 10 as interest expense or the cost of capital from 20 which is no pad we have an eva of 10 million to determine market value added we need to deduct capital from the current market value of the firm and we have current value of 200 million pound and current capital of 100 million the difference we have 100 million so we have till now eva of 10 million and mv of 100 million we can also describe change in market value added as the difference between current period market value added and the previous periods market value added if we see that we have at present market value of 100 million which is market value added at the right now time zero and earlier as an opening balance we have market value added of 90 million dollar when we see the difference the difference comes to 10 million dollars now comparing the two market value adders we can see that the change in market value added is basically due to the current periods eva so we can prove that current period eva is the uh, residual market value added which resides and accumulates over a period of time and that period is the current period